I think Gears 5 might be the first AAA Xbox exclusive released on Game Pass. Although I suppose the correct term is now Microsoft exclusive, as moving forward it seems all the big titles will be released on PC as well. It's had the TV ads, the hype's been building, so right now Gears 5 might be the best advocate for a Game Pass subscription. But is it any good? Well, they've dropped the Of War now, it's just Gears. Similar to how FIFA Football and Madden NFL are now just FIFA and Madden. Hopefully that's not a sign that Gears will turn into a franchise that churns out a new game every year or two by adding the most minor of changes. That being said, the Gears of War series has reveled in how straightforward it is. Its premise is Video Game Shooter 101, shoot the bad guys until they're all dead. The first Gears of War laid the blueprint, a third person cover based shooter at a time where cover based shooters weren't really a thing, and each entry into the series added improvements while keeping the foundations broadly the same. Gears of War 2 added Horde mode, Gears of War 3 tweaked the multiplayer, both dug deeper into the series plot, uncovering more of the Gears universe and creating a trilogy with several memorable moments. You've got the Berserker and General Ram fights in Gears of War, the Battle of Jacinto in Gears of War 2, and still too soon. Then there's the prequel Gears of War Judgment, but eh, you don't really need to worry about that one. Then Gears of War 4 comes out in 2016. It was the first of the series not to be developed by Epic Games, and the big change was introducing new characters and a new story. 25 years after Gears of War 3, the Locust are back in an evolved form called the Swarm. Marcus is old and gets captured and his son JD has to save him. Also JD's friend Kate realises her mother is a descendant of the Locust Queen and she gets captured and Kate has to rescue her too? It's okay. So that brings us to Gears 5 which focuses on Kate's journey to understand the origins of the Locust Swarm and her family. Gears 5 I think takes a few more chances than its predecessors in an attempt to create a grander Gears of War universe. The best part of Gears 5 is what has made every Gears of War game so good, the combat. Starting between cover, blind firing around corners, ripping people apart with your chainsaw, that's when every Gears of War game is at its best. Gears 5 hasn't lost that and I'd argue actually it's better than ever. There are tough new enemies and plenty of over the top action sequences the series is known for. The weapon executions are also gloriously over the top. I found myself carrying weapons around with no ammo just so I could see every animation. <laughs> oh yeah, ooh, that's my shit. <clears throat> oh, in the face. Uh oh. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, 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 here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> the biggest change to the campaign is its setting. The story is split into acts and chapters as usual, but acts two and three take place in their own sort of self-contained open world. I don't know if this is developer coalition jumping on the bandwagon because it seems like every game needs to have an open world at the moment, but in fairness both areas look beautiful and they're fun to travel around. These big expansive maps do create a fair bit of downtime as you travel from mission to mission. Now, I'm fine with that to an extent, that's the nature of an open world, but if it takes me 5 minutes to reach a new mission area I'd rather not then have to walk on foot to the first objective. And once you get there, you usually have to work around a problem, unlocking a door, restoring power, finding the right switch, or god forbid move a cursor around aimlessly on a map until it tells you to stop. This is where I think the open world idea kind of falls flat. If you're going to make traversal around a map part of the game, then take it out of the parts where you're not in a vehicle. Wait, wait, what the hell 
hell is this? Another security gate? And if you need to make a joke out of it, it's probably a sign that it's getting repetitive. How many goddamn gates are we gonna find out here? I felt like a lot of my time was spent finding solutions to problems rather than doing the thing I came here to do. And that's before you add in the side missions, which I can only presume aren't as exciting as the main story, being side missions and all, but I don't know as I didn't attempt any. You could argue these walks to and from objectives aren't pointless as they're usually filled with dialogue. Conversations about a character's past, how they're feeling, what they're expecting to happen. I'm fine with this narrative as well. Kate's search for her own identity should hinge on her insecurities and fears, which we need to know about. But when most of this happens during downtime, it's easier to miss. Why not make it the focus? Sorry, got distracted. Why not replace opening a locked door for the tenth time with these conversations where Dell questions what Kate will do when she finds her mother? Maybe I'm reading too much into a campaign that isn't trying to create a complex and intricate plot. I'm okay, all right? Let's just find a silo. For the record, you don't seem okay. But these are the things that I noticed and because of them, they took some edge off the finale. The other new addition is stealth. Yeah, stealth in Gears of War. You know, the game where entire cities get sunk by giant worms? It's a giant worm! They're sinking cities with a giant worm! Bad enough that I'm fighting evil robots, which I never really got my head around. It seems they're cog robots that can somehow get possessed by the swarm. But you can also hack into them to turn them back into friendlies. Jack just floods their brains with voltage. It's crude, doesn't last long, but it works. Wait, so we're hijacking so swarm can we use it against? a well, a test subject data robot? is limited, obviously, but uh, why, uh, you know why bother? Go nuts out there. Thankfully, you're not caught in gunfights with them too often. It's actually worse than that. They come up in stealth sections which are beyond tedious. It's just a case of walking behind the robot and pressing B. But the gauge between silent and noticeable movement is pretty shaky, so most of the time it was just a mess. So much for the silent treatment! For those of you that won't bother with the campaign and are more interested in the multiplayer, not much has changed on the PvP front. Escape is new and I guess the reverse of Horde mode, where you have to fight through small spaces to get out within the time limit. And if you're wondering, yes, I'm playing as Emile from Halo Reach, and I'm fighting alongside Sarah Connor from Terminator. And no, I don't know why this is possible. But I am looking forward to playing Halo Reach when the Master Chief Collection comes to PC, and I think this is to remind me of that? I don't really know. Anyway, Escape is a nice change of pace, but it's less chaotic and fun than the classic Horde mode. <laughs> I appreciate that Gears 5 has tried some new tricks to reinvigorate the series, but a few additions move too far from the original Gears of War for me. But for the most part, Gears 5 is a genuine attempt at taking the series in, if not a completely new direction, a welcome diversion. No, don't kill him, don't kill him! Piss off! Yeah, well, you can't argue with that. Again. 